Bob Cooper, and we're in the RCA Americom Services Incorporated Vernon Valley Tape Center facilities, and this is a relatively new aspect of the, the satellite activities at Vernon Valley, and uh, um, Linda Sample, we've got uh, as modern a video tape production facility as there is probably in the United States today, isn't there? Yes, that's right, Bob. We have um, practically the latest equipment and some of the most sophisticated equipment, I think, in the, in the industry. The one thing we have for production, we have the 340 PDP-11, three, uh, the computer switching, the CMX. It's all computerized. Everything is as uh, totally as modern as you can get it. One of the latest. We have the seven of the videotape machines, the TR-600 RCA. Uh, These are the big quad machines. That's of correct, course. the two uh -huh. inch quad. Plus, we also utilize the Sony uh, 2800 uh, cassette machines for backup at the facility. Why don't you, uh, we're, what's this room we're sitting in called? Okay, the, what we're sitting in now, Bob, is the control room. And um, if you're familiar with the RC Americom Services Incorporated, what we are is a playback center for the satellite. We originate live broadcast. At this time we have a cable affiliate we're using. Showtime is our major affiliate, but our major client. But we, we are also set up to, uh, to play back for any other client that would be, that it would need two inch quad or cassette playback for the satellite. And what we're sitting in we, is the control room, the switching. What happens here is we have two operators. We have an east coast uh, switch. Go ahead and slide over there. Okay, and uh, We're on rolling chairs, I might add, on a slippery <laughs> floor. And be my guest. Okay, thank you, Bob. What we have here then is an East Coast switcher and a West Coast switcher. We have seven, as I mentioned, we have the seven tape machines, of which three of these are used for the East Coast feed and three are used for the West Coast feed. The East Coast signs on at 5:30. The West Coast signs on at 7:30, and we uh, we go into approximately 5 a.m. in the morning. So we're we're um, uh, practically including the production of 20-hour facility. Mm -hmm. let's, let's back up a little bit and explain by, by way of um, comparison that the, um, uh, the satellite signals that the cable operator receives and distributes to his customers from, let's take HBO as something that's done differently than, say, Showtime. They're done in their studios and brought out here on terrestrial microwave to the Vernon Valley site. Showtime, on the other hand, uh, opted to have uh, the video begin at the site itself. And so wh where we are is not only the playback facility to play back the Showtime tapes for their customers, uh, which go 40 or 50 feet behind my back to the actual uplink transmitter, but we're also in the production center where um, uh, the promotions, the trailers, and things like that that are customized for either uh, Showtime general promotions or there's a promotion going on across the screen now on a crawl for Carthage Cablevision, which I would guess is Carthage, Missouri. Um, you're, you're actually producing for use in, in this case, the Carthage Cablevision system, a customized promotion that, they w that w is put on videotape and then what happens to it? Okay, it's, it's originated here. We do produce, like you say, we do as much production uh, in, uh, here as a lot of uh, New York facilities could do. We are, we are able to accommodate the client. What happens from here is the producer of Showtime will come in and direct what he wants on his particular facility. If he wants um, this to go to Carthage, it is for Showtime uh, production. And he sends it from here on two inch quad to the uh, to the affiliate to the client, and there he probably puts it on a umatic and then uh, plays it back to his affiliates. Okay, so this is more than just a playback facility, which is I think is how most people thought of this facility when it was first announced by RCA. What's going on directly behind us in this window? You mentioned the the client Showtime and the custom production of uh, of a Carthage uh, a promotion. Right, right behind us is something that we very much are proud of, and as, as I mentioned was the computerized editing. Uh, we have um, the uh, computerized editing plus the uh, video font and uh, Rice Valley switchers, everything that is involved in a production facility. We produce here uh, probably eight to ten hours of production every day with two, only two editors we're, we're able to produce that much work. And the, the director is here, the client is on site. The client is out here as a producer on site directing my people what they want on the videotape and what they want edited. 
And then they take the uh, particular tapes back. I see, quote, an entire showtime evening on teleprompter, Wednesday, October 25th. I suspect that's for a particular teleprompter system. They take the tapes back, then having been produced, and they'll distribute them to the appropriate cable system. Is yes, that right? That's correct, Meg. That, Bob, that is right. That's what happens. That's what they'll be doing. Um, you mentioned the uh, the Viewmatic machines, and so people won't misunderstand the, the, the type of uh, equipment uh, that's in use to send the actual uplink signal uh, through the transponder and, and to the cable system in Carthage or wherever. Could you explain the function of the Viewmatics and, and uh, uh, what you've done to backstop your own operation to make sure that there is an uninterrupted service at all times for the, uh, for the cable customers? Right. Uh, as I mentioned, the Sony 2800s are used for, uh, they're started simultaneously with the 2-inch quad, and auto, they're synced up, and any, they are therefore in any th same synchronous with the 2-inch um, uh, tape, the feature that's playing back. And okay. if there's an interruption in, uh, like a, a quad machine will have a technical breakdown, these uh, U-Matics, the operator switches automatically to the u -matic. The client at home, the affiliate, sees no interruption in his uh, programming. He sees no problem at all. And then the operator then goes out and switches to another spare machine, a two-inch machine, moves the feature over, and then they go back to the two-inch from the u -matic. So it's everything's fully, fully protected so that the, the viewer sees no interruption. Now, um, that means then that a, um, an evening's production work for Showtime, for example, is really produced and put on two separate masters, as it were, a three-quarter master and a, a two-inch master. Right. Okay. That's correct. Yes, sir. That's exactly the way it, way it happens. Showtime orders up. We ourselves um, are capable of making the dubs of any um, any of the features that goes uh, that goes over the air, or Showtime generally orders in uh, the cassettes and bring them in for our own stock, and therefore... Uh, they they bring it in from New York and we play it back. Is this a when you say 20 hours a day? Are, are we talking a seven day a week facility? Obviously the uplink portion of it must be, but uh, we're talking a seven day week, uh, seven days a week. That's correct. Well, right now our production is five days, but we are uh, on an overtime basis. We we can go seven days a week. That's no problem. Now you're in a position here to service virtually anybody who comes to the cable industry who needs similar kind of production work, um, overlooking the fact that you have grown very rapidly and uh, have a, a very a considerable amount of equipment in a relatively small space, uh, uh, with the addition of additional transponders for cable down the road in the fairly near future, um, do you envision this portion of the activity uh, growing and, uh, and fairly soon? I always envision the, uh, the, this portion of it growing any way possible that we can, yes. I have a feeling it won't be very long before <laughs> it does. <laughs> I hope very soon. <laughs> well. But we I, will be able to accommodate the new clients, hopefully. I, you know, we neglected to point out that you're in charge of this whole doggone thing. <laughs> I find that very fascinating, not because you're a woman. That's not the reason I find it fascinating, but you were telling me before we started videotaping that you really began in the broadcasting business and radio That's just correct. 12 years ago. That's correct. And um, uh, to go from what w you did local radio announcing and engineering? Yeah. That's correct. I was a radio announcer, engineer uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas. I uh, started out in radio, had a first class FCC license which allows me to work with maintenance and transmitters and I have done so and I just uh, have the experience and background. I went into commercial broadcasting, into local production at Oral Roberts University and then into PBS in Oklahoma City which I think is where you <laughs> said you were from. That's so, right. That's um, right. I what in the world of all the things a woman could do in the broadcasting business, you know, for everything from traffic to um, uh, directing and production of specialized programming and so on. What in the world directed you towards the engineering and um, uh, or engineering dash production aspects of this? It's it's a, I think a little bit strange direction for for, for you to have gone. Do you, you, can you look back and see something that happened that uh, oh, got I you pointed? I can definitely look back. At one time, I didn't know a transistor from a tube, and when I went to uh, the class um, in announcing, the instructor hated females. He had not even seen a female in radio and he did not want me in his class. So I decided, actually I got into engineering for spite. 
and then I found out there was more money in it <laughs> and decided to stay in it. <laughs> and, and actually, I'm, I'm adept to engineering and production, and I prefer management, but um, I, I enjoy all aspects of broadcasting. When you go home at night, do you put all this out of your mind? I would like to say yes. I'm just recently married, so I'm a newlywed, and I'd like to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, but it's kind of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Before you were recently married, did you go home at night and put all this out of your mind? I recognize you have special circumstances at the moment. No, I did not. So you really did live and breathe and think this, this electronics and engineering. Yes, I uh, most generally yes. I try and keep a, um, a broad, you know, broaden your sort of horizons, so to speak. But it, it is difficult for uh, someone who's interested in it to uh, just cut it off right at eight hours. You've uh, you've moved very far in twelve years. Where, where does where does Linda Sample see Linda Sample three or four years from now? Have you thought about that at all? President. Of <laughs> President of RCA AmeriCom Services. <laughs> I love that. I love that, and I think that's a good place to stop.